Hello friends, today I'm uh, trying to discuss a new way of doing um, or exploiting, I guess, vulnerabilities on uh, the various routers that exist uh, from D-Link. Uh, one of the findings that I came across while looking and doing reverse engineering was executing command injection. Um, this is a very interesting finding from the perspective that uh, if you are connected to uh, one of these routers that has this vulnerability, um, locally, then you can basically execute command injection and actually take over the router. Uh, this is an amazing vulnerability from the perspective of showing how reverse engineering can help you to uh, actually identify these kind of bugs and bugs such as buffer overflows and things of that nature. Um, a lot of this aspect has been covered in the book of Embedded Device Hacking. Um, I know that some of the people who have been watching these videos, have been asking me if there are any um, books that they can look at or any material that they can look at to learn these kind of things. And and to be honest, until like last year, I didn't even have an idea of such a book that exists, but it seems like uh, an author named Samuel Huntley has written a book called Embedded Device Hacking. Um, and that basically teaches you the different ways of uh, doing hardware hacking as well as, uh, you know, software reverse engineering on web based routers. Uh, this is a, that's an amazing aspect. Uh, you know, I haven't seen any books so far of that nature. So um, anyone that's interested in doing sort of reverse engineering, especially on embedded devices, uh, can use or actually look at that book. Uh, but so over here, basically, I, this is uh, uh, the firmware that I had, ex you know, was able to extract all in that book for uh, one of the DNA. DIR850 router. Uh, basically, what you can observe, I'm sorry, this is a DIR850L router, if you can look over here. And, and what you can observe in this case is that uh, basically, uh, yeah, you have this whole big functional chunk. And one of the chunk that was interesting to look at was called SSDP CGI. And uh, yeah, there it is. So it seems like there's a string comparison between SSDP CGI. Usually, um, when I see strings such as SSDP, that kind of indicates to me that this would be sort of the SSDP protocol. And so I started sort of looking at where does that lead to, and it seems like it calls SSDP CGI and Um If you look at SSDP CGI and main, it seems like they're taking a couple of header this, this get environment variable um, is a function actually which takes these values as um, uh, as arguments and basically identifies um, you know uh, if that value exists in your HTTP request. So in this case now keep in mind that SSDP protocol is sent over UD. It looks very similar to HTTP but it is basically HTTP over UDP. So um, in, in, the, in the simplistic sense yes it is that HTTP protocol, the only difference is that it's sent on UDP. Um, an interesting aspect over here is that it seems like there is an HTTP underscore ST header, um, and that is basically extracted using get environment. And then basically, if you look, if you follow the strings, um, you will realize that it's basically comparing the values from that specific HTTP header. So whatever comes out from HTTP underscore ST is being compared over here, and based on that calls are being made um, to something called as lib and external dbc underscore system. So whenever I see a system function, that seems interesting also to me. So that means there's a good chance that they're taking strings and are, you know, concatenating them and, and calling out a system function. If you follow this path, you can look at it that, um, you know, there are, this path leads to something called as underscore service. Um, and that is a comparison of the string, you know, code and service code. Um, so basically, anything that's sent over here is compared with these values, and if one of these values matches up, it directly goes over here and calls this XML DPC system, which, if you look at, actually you know, uses your system function and call and basically executes the arguments. So, following that, what I was able to do was create basically a Python script that basically um, you know, sends the same thing. It sends basically UR and colon schema. And that has the service code in that, which is followed by an actual command. 
Uh, so in this case, what I'm trying to do is, you know, open up a terminal and be my USB 909. And if you look at it, so what I'm going to do is try to do a terminal open up my, my laptop. And as you can see, it's saying that it's unable to connect to the remote host. Now, we can basically send this Python script. Now let's try connecting to the router. And you can see that I have been able to connect to the router. This is the router's folder and basically all the, the, the file system that it has been exposed. So a lot of these things I have I have learned from that specific book. I would you know suggest someone who's you know interested in learning about MIPS ground based um, you know form and extraction and reverse engineering to look at that book. Um, again, the name of the book is Embedded Device Hacking for the Device. Um, I think it's available on Amazon. Um, I guess need to be connected to the regular routers over here. So I would say look at this book. This is really a good book that, that shows how to do these things. Um, again, thanks again.